Hey friends, it's time to start a new project. So you guys have probably seen this video up here where I took the Ikea pack system and turned it into our pantry. And it's amazing and I love it. But I bake a lot. And one of the things that I struggle with is all of the things that I have for baking. Let me show you. I went around and I collected everything that I have. So we've got sprinkles, cookie cutters. This has got different types of piping tips. We've got all sorts of baking ingredients. And this doesn't even include all of my pans, all of my molds. Once I had all of my food out of my cabinets and put into my pantry, I really thought that's where I was gonna put all my baking stuff, but I have enough space in one section to hold all of my baking stuff. So I found myself going to like three different spots in the kitchen and it just, it didn't work. So, Facebook resale. I found this amazing cabinet, vintage cabinet. It is so cute. It's got the nice sliding glass doors. It's nice solid wood. It's a little rough, but nothing that I can't fix. So I'm gonna fix this up and turn it into my dream baking cabinet. Here, come right here and say, give a thumbs up. Thumbs, thumbs up, like that? Here, watch, do this. Keep your thumb up, like this. Do that, and then hold it up to camera and say, give a thumbs up. Thumbs up. Say, don't forget to like. No. 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 I did it. <laughs> say, be sure to subscribe. Because I, I did it. Good job, buddy. Now the people that I bought this from, they spray painted it. So you can see where it wasn't completely covered. And there's some pieces of wood that have been broken off. So it's it just needs a little love. Here is the color that I picked out. This is Jolie paint. And I got the matte finish and rose quartz. So I got this from a local store in Memphis called Me and Mrs. Jones. And Stephanie Jones, who owns the shop, said that rose quartz is a grown-up pink, which I love that. Here it is. Start at the top. Oh my goodness, this is so pretty. Oh, I love it. Part of the veneer has popped off and so I need to make a nice clean edge so that I can putty this and let it dry and then paint it so that you never know that it was damaged. So I just want to clean this edge up because it is, you can kind of see it's all jagged, wonky. So I'm just going to take this blade and run it down and just kind of clean it up. You can tell down here where they've already had to do a little bit of patching, which eh, it's not so hot, but we'll sand that down and kind of fix it. All right, so now you can see that we've got a nice clean line. It'll be way less noticeable that anything has actually been done to it. Okay, so now I'm gonna be using this sexy guy right here, Durham's Rock Hard Water Putty. And he even, if you look really, really close, he's got chest hair sticking out of his little tank top. Now, if you are from Memphis, I got this at Me and Mrs. Jones. Fabulous, fabulous resource. So if you are in Memphis, you definitely need to check out her shop. She's an incredible resource and an awesome little DIY boutique. So that's actually where I got my paint and this from. If you are not from Memphis, I'll also put a link in the description below of where you can order this. So Durham's comes like this. It's a, you can see it's a powder. So I'm just gonna add a little bit of water to this. So I'm gonna pour it into a little dish and then at slowly start adding some water. They say it's about three parts powder to one part water, but you're, you just want it to become a nice, almost like buttercream kind of consistency. So I just have an old stained bowl of Jack's that I'm gonna be using. Okay, it's starting to come together. 
So here is my putty. You can kind of see. It spreads smoothly, like it's it's really nice and smooth without being too soft. If it's too soft, it's gonna run, and we definitely don't want that to happen. So I've got some palette knives. I've got a larger one to start with, and then this tiny one to kind of get in there with some details. And actually, this tiny one's gonna be awesome. Okay, so while this dries, I've got a couple of other little spots like this little ridge right here that I'm gonna fill in. I'm also gonna clean up this drawer as well. Just doing the same thing I did over here. Now, just a heads up, this is not something you're gonna want to use on a, a, like a stained furniture. Um, it's not gonna hold that stain. So this is much more for painted furniture. Uh, also, not for outdoor use. You're gonna want that for your inside. It can be a little uh, temperamental when it comes to wet surfaces. So we're gonna let this dry. I'm actually gonna leave this and let it really cure for 24 hours and then come back in and I'll sand it down and then it will be ready to paint. All right, since I don't have any sanding, I don't have any sanding blocks, and really don't even have small pieces of um, sandpaper. What I do have are the sanding discs that go on my sander, but I, I'm not using, I'm not sanding that big of a spot. Like I, I don't want this size to be removed. So what I'm gonna do is, I've got different grits here. I am going to, I took a shim that I found out in the workshop. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make my own little tiny sander so that I can sand these little spots without removing too much paint. So I'm actually gonna start with 180. And what I'm gonna do is, so I've got these shims, because I had a whole bunch of them in the garage. What I'm gonna do is just on the fat end of the shim, I'm gonna take this and I'm gonna fold it over and then fold it over again. And then I'm going to fold it down. And then I'm just gonna taper on that. And look, I've got this tiny little sanding block. So it's perfect for what I need. So I'm going to start with 180, then that way it'll get, I also have some spots on here that are a little bit larger, and that will get the big chunks out of the way and allow me to sand it down and then I'll hit it with 220 after to really smooth it out. So now I've got my little sanding stick. It's perfect for what I need. Alright, so this is nice and dry now and I just need to clean it up. So I'm gonna use my sanding stick. I actually kind of moved it down just a little bit. I'm just gonna knock off some of these raised areas so that this is nice and smooth when I go to paint it. Check out my crazy leggings. These are my painting pants. I'm supposed to wear something really crazy and colorful to paint in so that it won't matter if you get paint all over it. So I am not going to be painting the inside of all of this because I will never see it. Yes, I'm being lazy and leaving the doors attached to the cabinet. Well, I came in this morning and there are some stains on my piece of furniture. I did not notice the stains when I started painting. Um, it's kind of weird because everything was white, so I don't know how they came through, but they did. And that's okay because that happens, but fortunately I have not varnished it. So what I'm gonna do now is I am going to sand those spots and then I've got a little stain blocking primer I'm gonna put on that those spots I'll let it dry completely and then I'm gonna paint back over them and just kind of feather it in so that it blends in with the rest of the paint once that is dried then I will varnish Boo. oh I saw you. Um, I wanted to show y'all oh, my new sticker that I made I've got it on my water bottle look how many stickers I have on my water bottle now 
That's my other sticker I designed. This sticker, and of course my lens rentals. I love my stickers in my water bottle. I'm kind of addicted to making stickers, it's really fun. So I asked my Instagram followers if I should just leave this painted or if I should sand the corners down just a little bit. Um, and all of you said sand, so I'm gonna sand this down now. Uh, if you don't follow me on Instagram, you should head over to Gagali Gal and give me a follow. So I finally finished painting this with the rose quartz. So now I'm gonna be using the Jolie varnish. So it's their clear acrylic top coat for furniture and cabinetry, low luster, which is what I wanted because I didn't want this to be super glossy. I'm gonna let this sit for four hours and then I'm gonna come back and I'm gonna do a second coat. Hopefully it does great in two. If I need an additional coat, I'll do one in the morning, but we'll just check and see. Now you can use wax on this. They have just the clear wax or they have a tinted wax. But for me, a varnish is a whole lot faster and it's giving me the look that I want. So I'm sticking with the varnish because again, faster. Uh, hi there! <laughs> you say hi? Jack. Hey, oh, Emma. Oh, Emma. Are you hugging the tripod? Yes, I love that tripod. You love that tripod? Mm. I'm so glad. Here, right, come right here. And say, give a thumbs up. First, first, up like that. Here, watch. Do this. Keep your thumb up like this. Do that, and then hold it up to camera and say, give a thumbs up. Thumbs up. Say, don't forget to like. No. 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 Like. I did it. <laughs> Say, be sure to subscribe. Because I. <laughs> I did it. Good job, buddy. Thanks, buddy. I love you. <laughs> you give mommy a kiss? Mwah. Thank you. Hello, dear. So some of these drawers have an odd shape to them and I want to line them. I actually had some leftover wallpaper from when I redid my bookcase. And so I thought this would be a really fun drawer liner. Uh, this is peel and stick wallpaper. That's the only way this is going to work. Well, without paste and all that nastiness. But so for my drawers, I actually I have some leftover wallpaper from when I redid my bookcase. And so I thought this would be really fun as the liner for these drawers. So what I'm going to do is, this is, now this is peel and stick, because that's really important. Otherwise you're gonna be dealing with paste and nobody has time for that. All right, so I'm just going to measure out my wallpaper. I just wanna make sure that it covers all the edges of my drawer. And I'm gonna cut the excess off because it's a lot easier to work with when you don't have a lot of overhang. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to start on one edge and I'm just going to pull the corners back from this backing and pull this off. And I'm going to pull this off just part of the way because I do not want to have a giant sticker to deal with. So I'm gonna come down here, 
place my wallpaper, stick it down, and then I'm just going to keep rolling. I'm gonna keep pulling this backer as I go down the drawer. Press it down onto the edges of the drawer like a giant sticker. So my drawers are are not just rectangles, which makes it a little bit harder to deal with. So like this one has a major curve right there. So what's nice about this is once you've stuck this down, you're gonna use a razor blade. And you are simply going to find that corner Put that razor blade in there, and then you're just gonna follow along the side of the drawer. And then keep working your way all the way around the drawer. So we're gonna pull this off. Got the perfect size liner for my drawer. And this peel and stick wallpaper is so forgiving. If you need to pick it up to adjust it a little bit, you can. It makes a beautiful drawer liner. Okay, so I've done three. I've got two more to go. And then we're gonna add all the pulls to these. And then we get to organize my favorite part. So ready. This has been a fun project, but a long project, and organizing is my favorite part, so we've saved the best for last. Last drawer. All done. Now it is time to put the hardware on. Here are my pulls. Aren't those amazing? I love the pink and gold together. So I'm gonna get these attached, so I got this. So when I was shopping for, or when I was looking for pulls, I really loved the brush gold and I could not find like all the sizes that I wanted. So I'm doing a little mixing and matching with these, um, but I think they look good together. So let's get these attached. All right, so this is the final drawer and then we'll go inside and put these on the cabinet doors. Okay, so all the painting is done. I got the hardware put on. I got the drawer liners in. So now it is time to organize my favorite part. So I decided to include my cookbooks in this baking cabinet. One tip for when you're doing, <laughs> one tip for when you're putting books on a bookshelf, find your deepest book, put it on there, and then bring everybody up to meet them. Because if I actually did this the way they were in size, then some of my friends would be pushed to the very back. So, I believe. Magnolia Table is the deepest book, so everyone else is gonna fall in line with that one. One of my favorite things to look for at thrift stores and antique malls are vintage cookbooks. I love these. Love this. Cooking temperatures, look at this text. Isn't that beautiful? Cooking temperatures, simmering water is 180 degrees if you were wondering. Boiling water should be 212. This is just, in this one. Coleslaw dressing, vegetable slaw. This one, the copyright date, this was from 1946. Originally printed in 1896. 
They're just so fun. And then of course, another plant because, I mean, can you really have too many plants? All right, one section done. This is not going to be just a decorative shelf. Like this is a very functioning shelf. I need to hold, I need this to hold a lot of stuff. So some of the things in here you may think, oh, that would look so less cluttered if she didn't put everything out on the shelf. Well, this is not an episode of the home edit. No offense girls, love your show, but I need this to actually like truly function for me. And that means all of my stuff has to be included. So I'm gonna show you how I will organize a fully functional baking cabinet because I bake and I need to use this and I have a lot of stuff to go in here. So we're gonna have to get creative on this one, folks. One thing I did not want to do with this whole project was to go buy a bunch of matching stuff it's just it's so expensive so I used my old Tupperware containers for some items and then a lot of this stuff is what I was using anyway so I've got these little storage jars this one I mean I've got I mean you'll see there's all different types of storage jars in here but it's what I've used in the past and it's what's worked for me so I was not about to go spend a whole bunch of money for something that I really already had this is a pot that I made in high school that I used to hold my toothpicks and I love it um, and then this milk glass, I actually, so I use turbinado sugar to top, um, to top my muffins and it just kind of gives it a nice little crunchy coating. And since I always buy the packets, I just figured I'd put them in my milk glass. I'm one of those that at the end of season, I always go and buy all of this stuff on clearance. So all the little gift boxes and things for, you know, neighbors treats or teachers gifts or all that stuff. So I'm gonna put all of these in, in this drawer along with, along with all of my cupcake liners. I mean, I seriously have buy them for every season. I also, I'm a sucker for cupcake liners, so if I see unique ones, like from Home Goods or TJ Maxx or, you know, any, or Target, like if they're on sale, I grab them. And then I also have, like, little cupcake decor. So I just need to figure out a way to organize this a little bit better. What are these? Cup labels. Oh, Halloween cup labels. That can go in. Right. And then I do have birthday candles, and so I'll put that in there as well. So many cupcake liners. All right, I need a better way to sort these. So I've got this little desk organizer. My cupcake liners fit perfectly in here, along with my little mini ones. And there's still some room left for me to put some of my cupcake decorations. And also my candles. Love when things work out perfectly. Now everything has its spot. I've got all my cupcake liners, my cupcake decorations, my candles, and then I've got all my storage bags over here. Got some unopened cupcake liners here, and there's still some room back here. And since this is going to be a very um, tight fit for everything, I want to make sure that I'm utilize all the storage. So I've got these, which I need for, these are my cake supports for when I do a tiered cake. And those will fit back there nicely. Get them out of the way. And then I also have these mini squeeze bottles. I'm gonna go ahead and open these up. 
these are put back here as well. All right, what else can we fit in here? Still have real estate. Aha. So these are for cho making chocolate candies. This will fit there. Some molds for making flowers, some fondant flowers. So then I've got these smoothers, some icing smoothers. I can put those back here as well. Okay, I think we have maxed out this drawer. Push that one back in. And then for this drawer, I'm gonna have to put some pans because I have a lot of pans. I think these pans, I think I'm gonna be able to get more pans in here if I use this little pot rack. I'm just gonna slide that in there. The nice thing about it is I can actually push it to one side and then use that empty space to hold one of my pans. Oh, y'all have so many pans. It's where I'm gonna put all my back stock and then all of like canned items. So this is gonna be almost like a little mini pantry down here, but it's specifically for everything that I bake with. And we're just gonna see how much we can fit into one little cabinet. Okay, so this is way too cluttered for me. So, so I took my basket that had my marshmallows and this one, this single bag of chocolate, and I put the marshmallows in little storage containers up there. So now what I'm gonna do with this is I'm gonna put all of my extra flour, because um, I have all different types of baking flour, like I've got oat flour, and I have flaxseed meal, and I have gluten-free flour. So I've got all this kind of flour that will fit perfectly in this basket and then it can go up there and that will free up some space down here so that I'm not having to like pull things out. I, I don't do well if I have to pull everything out in order to get something out. It stresses me too much. So we're gonna fix this. So much better. Now I can see everything, I can easily reach everything and it's not too cluttered. Perfect. Okay, so everything has its place. The only thing that I could not fit into this cabinet was actually, see this, we gotta patch that, was actually my cake, a little leveling saw. So I just put a little tack in the back of my cabinet. So that is where this will live. And the great thing is, is you can't see it from the front. So now every single thing is in this one baking cabinet. Everything. I am so happy. My husband's gonna be really happy because before all of this lived all over the kitchen. One last thing that we have to do before this is finished is we need to put some beeswax into the track and then we need to put clean the glass and put the glass sliding doors back in this. And then we are in business, folks. So I'm about to put the glass doors back in. I've got to clean them first. There's lots of little fingerprints on them. Um, but in order to keep the track nice and smooth and the glass sliding back and forth, especially since I just painted the track, um, I took a little bit of beeswax. I had a beeswax candle and I just took, like I let it melt down just a little bit and I took a um, toothpick and just kind of dripped a little bit into the, to the track. And then I went back through with a piece of cardboard and just smoothed it out a little bit. Cause I don't want it to be big and clumpy, but I need there to be a little bit of wax on there so that the glass will kind of glide smoothly. Okay, so I've cleaned the doors and now they just gotta go back into the cabinet. So if you've ever had a cabinet like this, then you always start with your backtrack first and just slide up and let it come down. And it's 
it's done. I'm so happy. Yay! Yay! Yay. Mom, move, oh. mom, move. This has been a labor of love, and I'm so mom, excited move, about mom, it. Mom, move. So let me give you a tour of my new baking cabinet. I'm gonna slide these doors open so the glare doesn't mess with everyone's eyes. All right, so here is our tour. We've got all these different containers, and really it does not bother me. Normally I kind of like things similar, but I kind of like this mixed up. I've got my holiday cookie cutters here. I've got my basket full of some extra flowers. I've got my little carousel here with baking powder, baking soda, all that good stuff. And then slide my glass door back. Oh, these tracks. Oh, it's so smooth. I've got my chocolates and my turbinado sugar in here. I've got my toothpicks and then my favorite cookbooks. And of course, my little cookie cutter carousel. And then I put my piping tips in here because I'm probably gonna get some more and that way it'll give me a little extra room. And then on this other end, I put all my piping bags because I had a lot more when I started going through everything. And then I've got the little rubber bands and then these little couplings that that's, will hold the piping tip on. And then, I've got my sprinkle drawer and I have made room for my food coloring. And my big drawer, I love this one, has all of my cupcake liners and even my little uh, bottles for when I do chocolate work. I've got all of my packages for when I give gifts to neighbors. And then this one is just holding some extra pans. And then look, my baking pans. Those are all of my rounds up there. And these stacked perfectly. Look how many are in here. There's so many rounds. And actually there's even a little one under there. And like they're so organized. I love organized spaces. All right, so then in here we have all of our back stock. So these are just all, all the ingredients that I only use for baking. So it was great that they all fit in here. Well, it's finished and I love it so much. I really love getting everything organized. Next up, big project, I'm working on my office. I have a very, very small office and I need to maximize that space. So I'm about to have to do some serious organizing in there. So I hope you guys will follow along. If you aren't subscribed, make sure you subscribe and hit that little bell icon so that you'll be notified when I upload a video. Also, follow me on Instagram. I posted a lot of this process on Instagram and got some feedback from you guys. So be sure to follow Good Golly Gal on Instagram as well. Thank you so much for joining me. Any questions or comments you have, leave them below. I also am gonna link everything that I used in here down in the description below. So thank you for following along. I hope you enjoyed it and I'll see you guys next time. Bye.